On today's quick tip, we're going to go over how to test your stepper motor and the cabling to rule out any issues with your motor. All you need to do this is a multimeter, and if you don't have one already, I highly recommend you get one because it's a very valuable tool to have for 3D printing. So let's get to it. So in this quick little video here, I'm going to show you guys how to test the coil resistance on your stepper motors. So this is just a random stepper motor I have laying around that I use for testing boards. I have a zip tie on here to indicate when it's moving. So when I send a video to someone, they can see if the motor's moving. You can see here I have the stepper motor cable and this is the end that goes to the motherboard of your printer or control board or whatever you want to call it. Your main board in the printer, this is where this plugs into. On this connector you can see here we have four pins that go to the plug. These pins go to the coils on your motor. Now the easiest way is to measure at the end of your cable because sometimes stepper motors will have the actual pairs of the wires flipped. As you can see on this one, this center cable rolls over, meaning that the coils on the pinouts here are in a different order than what they are when they get to this cable. So manufacturers will usually wire this end up to the standard four pin connection that most main boards use. So this is the end to measure at. So you just need a cheap multimeter. You need to have it set onto the ohms section. The lowest this one goes is 200 ohms. So that's what I have this set on. You want to have it on a minimum of 20 ohms. Some multimeters do go down to 20 ohms. So if yours is 20 ohms, I'd recommend setting it to that. Most stepper motors coil resistances are under 20 ohm. So all you need to do is take the end of your cable here and take your probe leads, and it doesn't matter which one you use, and put it on the first two pins. And you can see here, and you usually want to leave it there for a second for the resistance to level out. And you can see here across the first two pins here, I'm reading 2.8 ohms. Now the other coil should read about the same. It should be within 0.2 ohms of each other or less. Less is better. Just to show you guys, I shouldn't have any readings across any of these other pins. So if you see here, I'm touching these other pins, I'm not getting any readings. If you get readings across these other pins, that means there's something wrong with either your cable or more likely your stepper motor. So now if I take my probe leads and put them across the other two pins on the other side of the connector, you'll see here we're reading 2.7 ohms. And like I said, you want to make sure your coils are within 0.2 ohms of each other. And this is within 0.1. So again, if we go to the first two pins here, we get 2.8 ohms on the one coil. And if we move over here, we get 2.7 on the other. So I know this motor works. This motor is in good shape. And that's how you test your motor. Now, if I measure across the two center pins, we don't get anything. Or over here, or over here. Same thing, if I put my lead on here and touch the other two, or even this one, we get no reading. And that's what you wanna see. You should only get a reading across two pins. If you get a partial reading across the other pins and there's something up with your motor, and that motor and the cabling should be checked and whatever is bad replaced. But again, just for a quick recap, so if I take the readings here on the first two pins that are together, we get a 2.8 reading. And again here, we get 2.7. This resistance is going to be different depending on what motors you have. So just for comparison, this is a Creality stepper motor. I'm gonna show you that this one will read different than this because these are two completely different motors. You can see the one is actually bigger than the other. So these will usually have different coil resistances. I don't recommend mixing cables from one brand of stepper motor to another but I do know that these two motors have the same wiring on their actual stepper motor connection. So this cable will work for either this one or this one. So just be mindful of that. If you're moving your cables around between different motors, you wanna double check that the wiring is the same from the stock wiring. As you can see here, the center pins on these right here are flipped before it goes to the plug. Some stepper motors do not have this little flip or twist in the cable before it enters the motor. So if you take a cable from a motor that has a twist in it and put it on a motor that doesn't need the twist in it, it's not going to run correctly. So again, I have this hooked up to my other motor. I'm gonna go ahead and test this one now and see what this first coil reads. And we're at 6.3 ohms. 
I'm just gonna double check that I have no continuity at all between these other pins, and I do not, so that's good. And let's test the last two pins for the second coil. And we're at 6.3 ohms as well. So it's that simple, just little checks like this. If you're having weird oddities with how your motors are moving, this is a really quick check to do. It's really inexpensive. This is literally a $10 multimeter. It's nothing fancy, nothing expensive, but it gets the job done. Now, multimeters like this aren't super accurate, but they're accurate enough to do basic testing on your 3D printer. I am gonna put a link in the video description for the ones we use in the shop, which are not these. This is just one I have laying around my personal office. Uh, but we have ones that we use that are about $20 on Amazon and they've held up to the technicians using them in our shop almost every day. But any multimeter will work as long as it's got ohms on it. So you can actually read ohms. You can see this one has quite a few options. You'll see most of these options even on the cheaper ones. You can get a multimeter from Amazon, Lowe's, Menards, Home Depot. Um, some home stores may even carry basic multimeters in their electrical section. But if you don't have one of these and you own a 3D printer, you need to buy one right now because this is a very useful tool to have for troubleshooting and you'll thank me later when you do get to a point where you actually need to use it. So I hope this video helped you guys out. Like I said, if you don't have a multimeter, make sure you guys own one of these. If you have a 3D printer, this can be used to test a multitude of different things, not just stepper motors, but also your hot ends, your thermistors, and your power supplies. This is very helpful for tracking down electrical issues and diagnosing them to find out what the actual problem is. So if you don't have one and you don't want to go to the store, you can hit the Amazon link on the cheap one I recommend in the video description or head to your local hardware store and pick one up. You don't need to get anything fancy. You can if you want, but a cheap little 10 to $20 multimeter is a very valuable tool to have for 3D printing. And this is just the beginning of the tips that are going to use a multimeter that we're posting to the channel here. Hope you guys like the content. Please hit that subscribe button as it does help us out on YouTube. And if you guys need parts for your 3D printer, make sure to head over to th3dstore.com to check out all the upgrade options we have. And if you have any questions, we have live chat and technical support available to answer any questions to make sure you get the right part. Hope you guys are all staying safe out there. And as always, happy printing.